Welcome to our lecture online and here we have another example of how to calculate the forces and the moment in a situation like this. Assume that this is like a roof of a stadium or a roof of a shed or something like that that's being held up by a post. Now by looking at the dimensions I guess it wouldn't be a roof of a stadium because it's not very tall but just it's a miniature version or something like that. And notice how the weight of the roof is indicated at various points along the roof to be 20 kilonewtons. Notice that they are spaced one meter apart, so that would be a distance of four meters. We have a cable being supported by the post, the vertical post here, which is hooked to the ground right there. And the cable has a tension of 180 kilonewtons. And so what we're asking for is to calculate the force at the bottom of the post in the x direction, the force at the bottom of the post in the y direction, and the moment about the post, assuming that the post is, is fixed to the ground, and so we could have a moment there as well. All right, how do, we go, how do we do that? Well, we know that the sum of all the forces in direct x direction must add up to zero, the forces in the y direction must add up to zero, and the moments about any point, also the sum of the moments, and I guess I should write like that, the sum of the moments about any point should equal to zero, as long as this is a static situation, of course, that would be the hope that this roof not be falling or caving in or falling over, anything like that. It's a static situation. So what should we do? Well, to find all the forces in the x direction, what we need to do is sum, of course, all the forces in the x direction based upon this one, those four forces, and then, of course, the uh, force over here. Well, because in the x direction, those wouldn't be adding anything because they're only in the vertical direction. To do that, we have to start by taking the x and y components, or at least calculating the x and y components of that particular force. So let's do that. So we have a tension in the x direction and we have a tension in the y direction. And of course we can find that by saying this is equal to, and if we take this angle right here, call that the angle theta, then t, then t in the x direction would be the opposite to that particular angle, so t, t sub x would be equal to uh, the tension times the sine of the angle theta. Now of course we don't often associate the tension in the x direction with the sine of the angle, but that's because that's the angle that we chose. Then we have the tension in the y direction, which is equal to the tension times the cosine of the angle theta. Now we have to find the angle theta, and so how do we find that? Well, uh, theta can be found by taking the arctangent of the opposite over the adjacent side. So this angle right here should be the same as this angle right there. And what we could do is we could say, all right, uh, that means that theta, and let me come over here, we'll work it out over here. We can say that theta is equal to the arctangent of the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. And so in this case, that would be the arctangent of, now the opposite side would be the five meters right here, and the adjacent side would be, well, that would be four meters plus two meters, a total of six meters. So that means the angle is the arctangent of five over six. So 5 divided by 6, take the arctangent, and we have an angle of 39.8 degrees. So that gives us an angle of 39.8 degrees, which then can be used to find the vertical and horizontal components of the tension in the cable. So in this case, that would be equal to 180 kilonewtons times the sine of 39.8 degrees, 39.8 degrees, and, so let's take the sine of that, times 180, and so we have a horizontal force of 114 or 115 kilonewtons. Now we find the vertical force, that would be equal to T times the, uh, oh, let me go ahead and put in the numbers, with 180 kilonewtons times the cosine of, the angle is 39.8 degrees, so we get 39.8 times the cosine times 180, and we have a force of 138 kilonewtons. So now we have all the forces indicated in the horizontal direction and all the forces in the vertical direction. Now, if we're going to find F sub X, we can see then that the only two forces acting in the X direction is the T sub X over here and F sub X over here. So we can say that this is equal to T sub X plus F sub X. And since we're looking for F sub X, we can then say that F sub X is equal to the negative of the T sub X. All right, now, 
keeping direction in mind because to the right is positive, to the left is negative, we can say that in this case f sub x is equal to the negative of t sub x. Now t sub x is acting to the right, that means f sub x will be acting to the left. So it would be minus 115 kilonewtons, and so we now realize that the force over here is actually a force to the left with a magnitude of 115 kilonewtons compensating for the horizontal direction of the force on or the tension on this particular cable. All right, what about the force in the y direction? Well, we have the four forces down here, we have the vertical force here, and then we have the one compensating or reactionary force pushing back in the y direction right here. So in this case, that should all add up to zero. So we can assume this to be a positive force, that would be F sub y. And if you already want to put the signs in for the negative, uh, negative direction of all the other forces, that would be F sub y minus the 138 kilonewtons. That's the vertical component of the tension on the cable. And then minus 20 kilonewtons, minus 20 kilonewtons, minus 20 kilonewtons, and minus 20 kilonewtons, which is the total force or the total weight of the... Of the um, support right there or the roof right there and so that means that we can then say from here we can then conclude that f in the y direction is equal to the positive of all that that would be 80 plus 138 or positive 218 kilonewtons and positive would indicate would be in the positive direction of course if you want to write that in vector format we can then say that f sub x is equal to minus 115 kilonewtons in the i direction and if you want to write this as a vector you can say that f sub y as a vector is equal to the positive 218 kilonewtons in the positive y direction all right there we go now what about the moments so we can see that these four forces right here um, would be indicative of the weight of that roof would give this a counterclockwise direction about this point right here counterclockwise which means that would be a positive moment about the bottom of the post right here then you can see that the vertical component of the tension in the cable would then pull everything over to the other direction that would give you a clockwise or negative moment about this point right there and of course when we add them all up that then needs to be negated if that doesn't add up to a zero um, zero uh, newton meter so to speak then of course we have a net moment about the bottom of the post here as well so what we're going to do now is we're going to take this right here we're going to take the sum of all the moments have to add up to zero equal to zero and so let's add them all up so in this case we have two uh, one two three four positive moments about this point caused by the weight of the roof so that would be equal to a positive 20 kilonewtons times a distance of one meter so you see that the line of action of the force has a distance away from the point of the moment right here equal to one meter so that would be times one meter plus 20 kilonewtons times two meters that would be for the second force right there that would be two meters away plus 20 kilonewtons times three meters plus 20 kilonewtons times four meters so all of those would be contributing a positive moment relative to this point right there now we have a negative moment caused by the vertical component of this force at a distance of five meters so that would be minus uh, that would be right here 138 kilonewtons times uh, five meters because the line of action of the force makes a distance of five meters, a perpendicular distance of five meters from the point of rotation or the, or the point of the moment to the line of action of the force. And finally, we have the moment at the bottom of the post. Now I'm going to assume that it's going to be in a positive direction. So we're going to add plus the moment, which is the unknown that we're looking for. And so what we're going to do now is we can then say, well, that means that the moment is equal to that would be, if we move everything else to the other side, that would be minus 20 kilonewtons meters minus 40 kilonewton meters minus 60 kilonewton meters and minus 80 kilonewton meters by moving those four 
uh, terms for the other side of the equation. And then finally moving this across, it would be plus 138 kilonewton meters, oh, kilonewtons, times have multiplied yet times the 5 meter distance. All right, now let's see what we get here. So we have 138 times 5, that would be 690. Uh, minus 80, minus 60, minus 40, and minus 20. That would be a total of 490. Let's see, yep, that would be 690 minus 200, which is 490. So we have the moment is equal to, so the magnitude of the moment is equal to a positive 490 kilonewton meters. And if you want to write it as a vector quantity, you would say that the moment is equal to, <clears throat> Let's see here, 490 kilonewton meters, and what would be the direction? Now, notice that the moment would be like this, in a, in a counterclockwise direction, which is a positive direction, so the moment would be pointing outward in this direction. So if this is x, and this is y, then this would be the z direction, so it would be in a positive z direction, so it would be like that as a vector quantity. And so we have now found the two forces, the horizontal and ver vertical force acting at the bottom post and the moment acting at the bottom post. And we've then also indicated in terms of the vector quantities. That's how we do that.